Uh, thanks everyone for attending uh, this webinar. Uh, this topic is, is very dear to me. Uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a topic of, uh, of, of research that uh, I have followed over the past five years. Uh, and um, pretty much what you're gonna get today is a bit of a summary of maybe maybe the most practical or the most uh, essential uh, aspects of uh, adaptive, inductive, and abductive reasoning to the system development life cycle. Uh, so bear with me. Uh, th there may be portions of, of this presentation that may be a little bit theoretical, but I'll make sure to uh, to give you examples that will bring it home so you can really see uh, the relevance of the material in your daily professional activity. So we're going to talk about deductive reasoning. I also talk about inductive reasoning, and a third kind, a little bit less known, uh, but pre pretty, pretty powerful, called abductive reasoning. We're going to look at going from evidence to hypothesis. We're going to also look at uh, going from a solution system feature to a user need. We're going to talk about requirements validation, uh, system verification, look at how those different types of reasoning uh, occur throughout the system development life cycle. And we're going to use an example also to illustrate that. And, uh, with our first uh, reasoning, that's probably the most common one. And, and anybody who's been through geometry or any, any kind of a, a basic math class would have been exposed to deduction or deductive reasoning. So what deductive reasoning says, it says that something, uh, a certain conclusion or a certain set of conclusions follow necessarily from true premises. So the example of, uh, of uh, a Thales theorem in geometry says that uh, if you have uh, three points, A, B, and C, uh, points uh, A and B are the diameter, are on the diameter of a circle, B e, uh, on that circle, it's going to be such that the angle A, C, and B is going to be a right angle. Uh, if, you, if you remember your days in geometry, there is some interesting ways of demonstrating that. Uh, I've used here an illustration to convey that idea that the triangles, if you extend them or create a, a, a symmetry of them, form a rectangle. So if you have rectangles, obviously the, uh, the angle uh, of each corner has to be a right angle. So that's a form of deduction uh, that is very common in mathematics. Uh, also can be used in, in daily life for things that we know how conclusions that follow necessarily from true premises. Reasoning really is a top-down reasoning process. It, it goes from generalizations and it follows to particulars. Another way to look at that, which is going to be very important for our uh, presentation today, is it goes from hypothesis to evidence. This type of reasoning uh, is called inductive reasoning. So this one is a little bit more sophisticated. It says that it asserts that something is probably true given some evidence relevant to it. So in that picture, for example, if you see water on a, on a window, and you don't necessarily can see what's going on in your backyard, you may say, mm, it's, possibly, it's possible that it's, it's raining. So again, it, it says that something is probably true given some evidence relevant to it. So look a little bit deeper into inductive reasoning. Um, it, it, it's a type of reasoning that usually um, brings into um, relevance evidence of evidence that we believe is relevant to a set of hypotheses. So that set of hypotheses, let's call it H. A lot of probability, probability involved in inductive reasoning. So, and, and, and the nature of the inductive inference comes from the following characteristics of your evidence. It may not be complete. It may be inconclusive, meaning that it may be consistent to some degree with the truth of every hypothesis in H. It may be vague or imprecise. It may be dissonant, which means some of your evidence favors one hypothesis and some favor others. And the sources of the evidence may not be perfectly credible. So for people who've done business analysis, that looks a lot like a set of requirements to me. Uh, when I saw this definition 
a few years back of what uh, a mass of evidence looks like in inductive reasoning immediately jumped to me. That looks a lot like my requirements when I have to gather them. And we'll go back to this a little bit later in our presentation. Now, let's reasoning. Abducting reasoning really has many, many shapes. But one of them, or if you want the most generic um, looking at it, it has to do with what we call imaginative reasoning. So at the very, at the very call of abduction is the concept of imagination. It's a process through which new ideas or new hypotheses come into existence based on observation. So if you look at, for example, the, uh, uh, the uh, arch here, this is a per perfect example of abductive reasoning. There is a, a, a creative act behind uh, a product like this. But con contrast that with the other two types of reasoning that we've talked about. When you have a deduction, when you go through a deductive reasoning, really imagination is not so much at play here because the conclusion is already embedded in its premise. You look at inductive reasoning, where, where imagination may not totally play is that you, you, uh, hypotheses of the idea that you're trying to test actually already exist. And you're trying to establish probabilist, probabilist, probabilistic grounds for it or evidence to sustain it. With abduction, there is, there is an act of creation, there is an act of imagination, there is something new that did not exist before that your mind brings uh, into existence. So that's kind of the global characteristics of abduction. It takes many, many, many flavors, and we're going to cover precisely two of them uh, in this presentation. So let's talk a little bit more about abduction. If you, if you are like me, uh, a fan of uh, of crime TV series like uh, CSI being one of them, you've been exposed to abduction all all throughout that series. Um, it's a reasoning that is used to generate uh, what we call inference metaphors, which also could be seen as a skillful combination of relevance and credibility characteristics of evidence. So the evidence has to be both credible and also relevant to be able to support a particular theory. In, in, the, in the crime scene investigation, that's what they do throughout every episode. They, they, they go through the process of creating or finding evidence that is both credible and relevant to a particular case. So here is our first view of abduction uh, from a, a little bit of a formal way of looking at it, but it's a, it's a very powerful one. So it's called overcoded abduction, um, and it's it's been created um, by uh, a philosopher. Uh, his name is Echo. Uh, he, he presents overcoded abduction in the following way. That if we have a clue, there is an evidence that, that an event has occurred, that's our first premise, a prior knowledge of context in which things like that event, E, have occurred, we may say something like this. Whenever something like H, which will be kind of a hypothesis, has occurred, then something like E has also occurred. If we say, he says, if H were true, then E would follow as a matter of course. Thus, there is a reason to suspect that H may explain the occurrence of clue E. In other words, clue E points to H as a possible explanation of its occurrence. Now, just reading this sounds a lot like that episode of CSI slide that I, I presented to you. If you're a fan of that show or if you have access to a similar crime, crime show, if you look at the, the, the thinking process of many of the detectives or the investigators,